good afternoon and welcome. Uh, if you haven't met before, my name is Julia Cox. I am the Youth Services Librarian at the Penticton Public Library. And it is time for a Summer Reading Club story. Uh, this, our first week, is the theme is Up and Away, Transportation and Technology. So I thought I would read you kind of a transportation story. Um, this is a traditional folk tale. Um, we do have a version of it in the library. This is The Flying Ship by Andrew Lang. Um, so I am doing uh, something that's just pretty close to that, but a little bit uh, adapted. So anyway, here we go. This is The Fool of the World and the Flying Ship. So now once long ago in Russia, there was a very great fool. He tried hard, but he messed things up all the time. If he tried to cook something, he would burn it. If he built a chair, it would break under the first person who sat in it. If he tried to carry things, he would drop them or he would hit people with them. He was just kind of a disaster. And it has to be said at this point, his mother had lost patience with him and she didn't have anything very nice to say to him. Oh, she said, you are the fool of the world. You will never go anywhere in life. But the fool was not discouraged. He was always, always hopeful. So when he heard that the czar, the king of all the Russians, was willing to give up half his kingdom and his daughter's hand in marriage to anyone who could build him a flying ship. Well, he was very excited. Oh, he said, Mother, I, I, I have to go. I have to go. I'm, I'm going to try. And she said, what? She said, you've never built anything that held together for more than five minutes in your life. Well, what are you talking about? He said, well, uh, I think I can do it. Oh, she said, fine, go ahead and try. And she gave him an old satchel with a moldy crust of bread and some stale water and said, on your way. And off he went. Well, he'd hardly gone far at all before he fell over his own feet. He looked up and there was a little old woman standing there. Are you all right? She said. Uh, yeah, I think so, he said. She helped him up. Where are you going in such a great rush? Well... I have heard that the Tsar of all the Russias, he, he, he's, going to, he's going to give away half his kingdom and his daughter's hand in marriage to whoever can build him a flying ship. Can you build such a ship? She said, her eyes opening wide. Well, no. Well, why on earth are you going to see the Tsar then? Well, you never know. I mean, something great could happen. Hmm, she said. Why don't we sit down here and, and have something to eat? And, and uh, you, yeah, maybe you'll think of something better. They sat down and he could see the little old lady didn't have anything to eat. And he thought, well, I'm kind of embarrassed about what's in my satchel, but well, I guess anything's better than nothing. So he opened it up to share his meal with her and he found that there was more than a moldy crust of bread and some stale water. In fact, there was fresh fruit. It smelled wonderful and meat, and cheese and rolls. It was a feast was plenty for both of them. After they'd eaten, he did feel much better. The old lady said, you know, I think that you should go and have a rest after that big meal. I think you should well, just, well, just walk into the woods a little way and uh, under the first tree that you find, I'd like you to lie down and, and take a nap. And, and when someone wakes you, well, you'll see what you'll see. I would ask you to remember one thing though. Oh, what's that? Asked the fool. It is better to be kind than clever, said the old woman. So if you should find yourself a flying ship, make sure you give anyone who needs it a ride. Oh, said the fool, yes, I'll do that. Well, going and having a nap under a tree didn't seem like a very good way to find yourself a flying ship, but you know, he was a fool, so why not? He did it. He found himself a comfortable tree he settled down underneath it, and before too long, he was <sighs> snoring away. Now, after a while, he felt someone shaking him awake. But when he opened his eyes, there was nobody there. There was something there, though, that hadn't been before. It was a ship, a beautiful, brand new ship, shining with its glowing paintwork. Oh my goodness, it looked amazing. <sighs> and it was floating just a little way off the ground a flying ship. He couldn't believe his luck. Oh, I wonder who the ship belongs to, but there didn't seem to be anybody on board and the ship kind of, well, it, it kind of waved at him and he jumped on board and immediately whoosh, 
It sailed up into the air and started towards the Tsar's palace just like it knew where it was going. <gasps> wow, thought, this is amazing. But he didn't forget what the little old lady said, so he kept his eyes open for people who might need a ride. And it wasn't long before he spotted somebody. He looked down and he could see a man on his hands and knees and his butt was stuck up in the air and his ear was pressed flat to the ground. And he said, uh, excuse me, what, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm listening to what's going on in the world. And the fool said, You're, you can hear everything that's going on in the world? Really? Uh-huh. Well, what's going on? Oh, it's snowing at the North Pole. You can hear that. Wow. What else is happening? A pear just fell off a tree on the other side of the world. Really? Said the fool. Well, um, do you need a ride? Oh, yes. Yes, said the sharp listener. That sounds very good. And he hopped up into the ship and they carried on their way. They hadn't gone too far when they spotted someone else. This person was hopping along on one leg and he had the other leg tied up behind his ear. It looked extremely uncomfortable. Ah, the fool said, uh, uh, do you need some help? Are you, are you okay? <sighs> and the man said, you know, if I, if I untie my other leg, I'm just so fast that whoosh, just in one bound, I'll be round the world and well, it's hard to even talk to anybody when you go that quickly. And the fool said, well, would you like to cut? Would you like to have a ride in the ship? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, said the swift goer. That sounds good. Ah, much easier than hopping. And he got into the ship and continued on their way. Well, it hadn't, hadn't been too long when they saw somebody else. He had an arrow cocked and he was just about to shoot it, but it seemed like there was nothing they could see that he was shooting at. And the fool said, um, excuse me, uh, what are you shooting at? I, I can't see a target. And the far shooter said, oh, I can't shoot at anything close enough for you to see. That's no challenge at all. I can hit something a hundred miles away without even looking. Really? Said the fool, that's amazing. Um, do you, do you need a ride? And the far shooter said, why, yes, yes, that sounds excellent. It's very warm out today for walking. And he got into the ship and they continued on their way. Well, after a while, not too long, in fact, they saw another person doing something rather strange. Well, not so strange, but he was drinking. He was drinking from a lake. And what was strange is that as he was drinking, the lake was shrinking. It got smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> until it was entirely gone. Wow, they thought. I've never seen anybody drink a lake before. Uh, are, are you okay? They said. Do you need some help? Do you need a ride? The man said, oh, yes. Well, you know, actually, I could have used just a little bit more to drink. What? They said, you just drank a lake. Yes, but I'm still thirsty. Well, why don't you hop into our ship? Maybe we can find you an ocean. So we did, and on they went. They hadn't gone very far when they saw somebody else. This man was carrying the most enormous load of straw. Now, straw is not very heavy, but if you have this much, whew, it looked very heavy. And the day was hot, so the fool called down, um, excuse me, uh, do, you, do you need a ride? And the straw man looked up and said, oh, Yes, yes, I'm taking this load of straw back to my village. And the fool said, they, they don't have any straw in your village? The straw man said, oh, well, they have straw, but not like this. This straw is magical. If you strew it around, even on the hottest day, it will suddenly become oh, just as cool and fresh as winter. Hmm, that does sound magical, said the fool. But do you need a ride? The straw man said, yes, it's very heavy. Well, he hopped up into the ship and on they went. And they went on their way and they met absolutely no one. They didn't meet anybody else. Actually, they went very quickly to the Tsar's palace. And they arrived there and the servants could see that they had a flying ship. Well, they went and told the Tsar. He was busy feeding his face. He was having a big feast. And they interrupted him and said, oh, sire, there, there are some people here. There's some ragged people, some, some, some peasants, and they have a flying ship. 
the Tsar was very excited. He really wanted that flying ship, but he remembered his promise, and he actually was not too excited about giving away half of his kingdom and his daughter's hand in marriage. He didn't want her marrying a peasant, and he didn't want to give away anything. But he thought, maybe I can uh, trick them out of the ship. So he said, well, there is one more challenge they need to do. I think you should tell them that I want a pear from a tree on the other side of the world, and I want it before I finish my dinner, or whoosh, that's it for them. Ha ha ha, he thought, they'll never do it. Well, of course, the sharp listener heard this even before the servant had come to tell him, and he related to the rest of them. Yep, a pair from the other side of the world, or whoosh, what, said the fool, <gasps> what am I gonna do? And the, the swift goer said, this is not a problem. I can help you with this, remember? I'll be back before he's even finished his second course. No problem. And he untied that leg from behind his ear and sure enough, just like that, he was on the other side of the world. He picked that pair. But then he thought, no, no, no I'm kind of tired. I think, I think it's, I have time for a nap. And he lay down under the tree and pretty soon he was snoring. The others were getting worried. The sharp listener tuned in and said, he's snoring, he's asleep under the tree. <gasps> the fool said, what are we gonna do? And the far shooter said, no problem, I can help you out with this. And he cocked an arrow and he went, Choo! the arrow hit a pear on the tree, which fell off and bopped the swift goer on the head. <gasps> he woke up with a start and realized it was time to be back at the Tsar's palace. And just like that, he was there. Whew. They gave the Tsar the pair, but he wasn't actually happy because he still didn't want to honor his promise. So he said, maybe I can think of another, another trick. And he said, you know, after their long dusty journey on such a hot day, those peasants must be thirsty. Why don't you give them some water? How about a hundred barrels of water as big as me? And if they can't drink all of them before I'm finished my dessert, that will be the end of them. Well, the sharp listener once again told them what was going on. <gasps> the fool said, a hundred barrels of water? How are we gonna drink a hundred barrels of water? That's terrible. I, I don't wanna be, that sounds awful. <sighs> The long drinker said, no problem. I've got this covered. I can help you out. So when they were given the barrels of water, the long drinker began to drink. <laughs> Pretty soon he finished them all. Ah, oh, he said, almost enough. Really, one more would have been good. Well, the palace servants went back and told the czar, They've drunk all the water. What? He said. He still did not want to honor his promise. Hmm. He thought for a minute. I know. It's a hot, dusty day for traveling. I bet they'd all like a nice, hot bath. Why don't you take them to the bathhouse and really heat things up? Yes. Yes, if we get it hot enough, they'll burn up to a crisp, and then I can keep the ship and not share anything with Oh, he could hardly wait. Well, once again, the sharp listener heard of the plot and he told the others what, what was going on. And the fool said, oh, oh my goodness, burnt to a crisp. Oh, this is, this is so bad. And the straw man said, wait a minute, this is not a problem. Remember the straw? I can take care of this. I've got it. It's all good. So the palace servants took them to the bathhouse. They locked them in and they turned up the heat and they turned up the heat and they turned up the heat. <gasps> they cranked it. But before they even broke a sweat, the straw man strew the straw around and pretty soon it was so cold they had to have a snowball fight just to keep warm. Well, when the palace servants came back and found that they were not burnt to a crisp, they went and told the czar. He was furious, absolutely furious. And he couldn't believe it. Ugh. 
he was so shocked that he actually couldn't think of what to do next. And he was determined to figure out how they had managed to get past his last trick. So he went into the bathhouse and he tried to figure it out. He had them, the palace servants turn on the heat again and they left him in there by himself. The door shut behind him and the bathhouse got hotter and hotter and hotter until finally the czar exploded in a puff of smoke. You know, nobody was sorry to see him go. The, the czar's daughter, who was actually a lot nicer than her father, came and said to the fool that she would be happy to honor her father's promise and give him half the kingdom, and that she would be pleased to marry someone who was so courageous and resourceful and had such loyal friends. It was definitely a good sign. But the fool said, you know, actually, I think I would like to have a few more adventures in the ship with my friends before I settle down. It's a nice offer, but eh, no thanks. I think we'll just keep the ship. The princess waved them a fond farewell. And so the fool and the sharp listener and the swift goer and the far shooter and the long drinker and the straw man sailed off in the flying ship. They sailed after a while over the fool's house and his mother who was working in the garden. He waved down at her and he said, you see, mother, it seems like I am going somewhere in life after all. And he was, because it's true. It is better to be kind than to be clever. And that's the end of the story.